Hey, boys and girls, what's up? Good morning. How are you today? Um, I'm doing great. We're, you know, it's it's Monday. We're on week two of our digital learning adventure. I'm so excited to have you join me this morning uh, so that we can read a little bit um, about the, the beginning of the American Revolution. So if you could get out your red textbook, I'm going to give you a second to pause the video so you can grab your red social studies book. It's the one, well, mine's purple, but yours is red on the side. Um, and if you could turn to page 160, I'll give you a couple seconds and, and we'll get started. I'm going to drink my coffee while I'm waiting. Okay, awesome. You ready? Um, uh, if you, in case you haven't figured it out yet, um, this is my basement, the basement of my home. Um, this is my, my board game table where I play my board games. I got a bunch of them back there. I'm sure you've already figured that out. I, I made this table, which I mean, it's not, I mean, so, I mean, that's, that's neat. I think I'm, to me, it's cool. Um, it's not a great table, but it like, you can put stuff on it. So check table. Um, yeah, uh, anyway, I just, you know, I think it's, it's fun that you get to see some of, uh, some of my stuff and, you know, kind of how I live my life. And Mr. Thomas down here playing board games in the basement like a nerd, which is, I love it. So hopefully, hopefully you think that's, or, you know, I don't know, if, you know, hopefully you think it's cool or if you don't, whatever, I'm still going to keep playing board games. Um, anyway. That's not why we're here. We're not here to discuss that. We're here to read social studies. I'm on lesson four, the beginning of the American Revolution. The revolution begins. And it's kind of dark down here, so I'm going to put on my glasses. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get this going. Let me drink some more coffee here. I've got my, my Hogwarts mug. All right. On page 161. Um, Lexington and Concord, I'm on at the top of the page. By 1775, colonists had stored weapons in Lexington and Concord near Boston. Two well-known supporters of independence, Samuel Adams and John Hancock, were also in Lexington. On April 18, 1775, British General Thomas Gage sent about 700 soldiers from Boston. They had orders to seize the weapons and arrest Samuel Adams and John Hancock. Obviously, they were sent to do that because the British government is becoming more and more concerned with the colonists um, stockpiling weapons and, and protesting. And, you know, they, they fear a war is coming, so they're going to go try and snuff it out. They're going to go try and stop it. Paul Revere, I'm sure you know that name, a Boston silversmith set off for Lexington to warn of the British approach. A second writer, William Dawes, took a different route. A third writer, Dr. Samuel Prescott, also joined them. They didn't get a poem, though. Just just Paul Revere, he got that poem, right? These other two, you know, jabronis, they didn't get a, they didn't get a poem. So, stinks to be them, I guess. Way to go, Paul Revere. By the time the British reached Lexington, Adams and Hancock had fled. Captain John Parker waited with colonial militia called Minutemen. Militia are volunteer soldiers who fight only in an emergency. So militia, different from like a standard army. Army is official, militia is unofficial. Um, they are their folks who are, uh, they're, they're volunteers who fight only in an emergency. Um, and also the, the word militia, it sounds kind of like the word military, and maybe that's how we can remember it. So, so people who volunteer to fight, um, which actually comes from the the Latin word for soldier, um, miles, which means soldier uh, or soldiers in in Latin, and that's how where we get the word military and and militia from. Um, so that's interesting. No, it's not, but to me it is. Um, anyway. Don't you miss this? I'm sure that you miss this. Mr. Thomas just rambling about random stuff that just is helpful for no one to know. <laughs> I miss doing it for people. The first shots. No one knows who fired first, but many shots rang out. Eight militia members were killed. British troops continued toward Concord, about 10 miles away. When the British soldiers arrived, many Minutemen were waiting. They stopped the British there. As the British retreated to Boston, Minutemen continued shooting along the way. More than 90 British soldiers were killed. So they just kind of like followed them and they ambushed them. And then they kind of followed them while they were on retreat and just kind of like shooting them as they were running, like ambushing them from the woods and following them along, which um, like rules of war at the time. Ooh, I'm sure that 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 really upset some folks because um, those are not standard rules of war, especially for 
like the 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 British nobility and stuff. Um, so I'm sure that they were not pleased by that. Um, so what did British troops do on April 18, 1775? Can you answer that? Can you think about that? W where were they going? What were they doing? Right. They were so they were on their way to uh, Lexington, right, to to seize weapons that the colonists were stockpiling and to arrest Samuel Adams and John Hancock, who were like the, you know, the leaders at Sons of Liberty and, you know, key figures in the the the, uh, the protests that the colonists were doing. Let's turn the page. Letter B, early battles. Three weeks after the battles took place in Massachusetts, a young New Englander named Benedict Arnold led a militia force toward Fort Ticonderoga. This was a British fort on Lake Champlain in New York. News traveled slowly in the 1700s. Therefore, the British at Fort Ticonderoga did not know about the events at Lexington and Concord. So, like, Benedict Arnold, he's leading a militia force, which his name will come up again. So, remember that name, Benedict Arnold. Uh, spoiler alert. In, in, yeah, he's, he's not a great guy. Um, he leads a militia force towards fight Fort Ticonderoga. They don't even know that the battles at Lexington and Concord have taken place at this point because, you know, it's not like they have, you know, cell phones and they can just like, well, uh, hey, we just uh, got attacked over in Lexington. Like that that's not how messages were traveling. Obviously, Paul Revere got on a horse and you know the poem. Those poor other guys didn't get a poem, but I'm sure they're over it. Well, they're dead, so probably over it. Ethan Allen. Love his couches. Just kidding. That's a joke. You don't get it. Arnold planned to capture the cannons at Fort Ticonderoga and take them to the colonial army camped near Boston. His force joined those of another New Englander, Ethan Allen. Allen's troops, the Green Mountain Boys, were militia from the area that is now Vermont. So this guy had the Benedict Arnold, his, his plan is to go and capture the cannons, right, at Fort Ticonderoga, which is a pretty good strategy because then the British can't shoot you with those cannons, but you can use those cannons against them. Let's find out what happens. Early on May 10th, 1775, Allen's men sneaked into Fort Ticonderoga. They surprised the guards, capturing the fort without firing a shot. So they just kind of snuck in in the middle of the night, and they, they captured the fort without firing a shot. Um, and Fort Ticonderoga was now, uh, it now belonged to uh, the colonists. Ticonderoga. Love their pencil. That's actually true. The Battle of Bunker Hill. In June, back in Boston, British General Thomas Gage decided to take control of the hills around Boston. That way, American cannons could not fire down into the city. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've talked about this. We've talked about the benefits of building your, uh, your settlement on a hill, right? We've talked about it's easier to defend when you have the high ground. Star Wars, if you know what I'm talking about. It's easier to defend if you have the high ground. It's also easier to attack, right, from the high ground. Um, it, 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 it is beneficial, therefore. Thomas Gage has this idea. He's a British general. He's a smart guy. He thinks, hey, there are a bunch of hills surrounding Boston. We should take control of those hills. And that way, American cannons can't fire down into the city. Because remember, if you have those hills... It's easier, your cannon shots literally go farther. They go down the hill, right? Uh, where was I? Sorry. Um, oh, but colonists learned of the plan. I'm in the, on the right-hand side, middle of 162. The colonial militia led by Will, Colonel William Prescott and General Israel Putnam were ordered to defend Bunker Hill in Charlestown across the Charles River from Boston. Instead, they decided to defend Breed's Hill, which was closer to the river. The colonists worked all night to build earthen walls for protection. So they're deciding that, like, the colonists learn that the, the British are going to come and try and take this hill or the hills around Boston. So um, William Prescott and Israel Putnam, they decide we're going to we're going we're gonna to take we're going to defend Breed's Hill so they can't have these hills. The battle begins, page 163. On June 17th, British soldiers led by Major John Pitcairn crossed the Charles River in boats. They marched up Breed's Hill toward the earthen walls where colonists waited. The Americans did not have much ammunition or musket balls and gunpowder. So obviously ammunition in this case, musket balls and gunpowder. But, you know, we, we know the word ammunition. You guys, you know, um, ammunition would be anything that's fired out of a gun or, you know, anything that fires projectiles. Well, the ammunition is the thing that you're shooting. Uh, officers told them not to waste ammunition by firing at soldiers too far away. 
Historians say that either Prescott or Putnam said, quote, don't shoot until you see the whites of their eyes. So meaning like wait till they get close enough because um, obviously you uh, you you will realize or you'll know that muskets back then not great not great accuracy from far away so if you're firing when the soldiers are too far away you're uh you're probably not going to hit them and you're just wasting ammunition and if you already don't have a lot you don't want to waste any right a british victory bottom of 163 twice the british charged up the hill both times they were turned back by american fire finally the americans ran out of powder and musket balls well, that's not great Peter Brown, an American soldier, described the third advance by the British troops. Quote, when the enemy came in, I jumped over the wall and ran. Musket balls flew like hailstones and cannons roared like thunder. Could you imagine? It'd be terrifying, right? Like you're literally in a war and the, the enemy, the opposing force, is like charging up this hill at you and you repel them. You, you send them back. You, they say, no, you don't. And back down you go. Then they come up again. You say, no, you don't. You back down they go. You win. Third time they're coming up you don't have any more ammunition you're out of bullets and they're like they're just coming right at you so i mean i you know peter brown you know turned and ran got out of there right when the enemy came in i jumped over the wall and ran musket balls flew like hailstones and cannons roared like thunder It'd be terrifying the british won what was later called the battle of bunker hill more than 400 colonists were killed or wounded but the victory was costly for the british more than 1,000 British soldiers were killed or wounded. That's the benefit of defending on a hill, right? They, you have an entrenched position. These people are marching, trying to go uphill. It's hard to advance uphill, and you're just firing down at them, right? And if you have a good defense and you have everything organized like the colonists did, they worked all night to get, to get um, walls and barricades built and stuff, um, you can defend that well. The colonists only ended up losing because they ran out of ammunition and had to retreat. So the British won the battle, but they lost over twice as many soldiers because the colonists were using tactics that were effective. They were using effective strategies. The British commander, Major Pitcairn, was one of the many British officers killed that day. So Major Pitcairn, the, the, the commanding officer of the British Army, didn't even make it. He, was, he himself was killed. Um, so let's let's just review really quickly the Battle of Bunker Hill, right? So we have the the British want to take the hills surrounding Boston so that um, the colonists cannot fire down into the city because the British the British have a, a huge occupying force in Boston, right? That was where the the king was sending more and more troops, right? Um, we we talked about that um, in our most recent um, reading that we did. Um, so the the colonists need to keep those hills so that they can basically deploy artillery on them to fire down at the British soldiers and drive them out of the city. Well, the British want to take control of those hills so the colonists can't do that. But the colonists learn about their plan, and they go um, and, and like, in a flash, basically, they go and they, it's an emergency. They all run out to the hills, and they, you know, they set up this defense at, at Breed's Hill, not Bunker Hill. It is called the Battle of Bunker Hill, um, but they were defending Breed's Hill. Um, and, uh, you know, the British are coming, they're attacking uphill, the colonists repel them, um, and two times the British come up the hill and the colonists repel them. Third time the British march up the hill, the colonists run out of ammunition, they have to retreat. So the British win the battle, they take the hill, which is, that's the, the objective of the battle, was to take the hill, whoever gets the hill. Well, the British did that, they got the hill, but at what cost, right? They lost more than twice as many troops as the colonists, um, so something to think about. So we talked about a couple um, uh, situations, a couple battles here early on. So we talked about Lexington and Concord. Those were the first, the first battles, the first shots of the American Revolution. We talked about um, uh, Ethan Allen taking Fort Ticonderoga um, with the Green Mountain Boys of Virginia, or excuse me, Vermont, not Virginia, Vermont. And then we talked about the Battle of Bunker Hill. Um, I would like us to uh, go over to the whiteboard and we'll, we'll uh, make a little, you're going to need a notebook or a piece of paper, um, and we'll uh, make a little organizer to help us um, review our main idea of what we've just read today, plus our supporting details. And then after we're done with that, you'll have a, um, a page to do on Canvas that, that I'll give you details for. So why don't we head over to the whiteboard? It's just right over there. Um, and then we'll get this stuff uh, squared away so that we can continue on with our uh, learning uh, Follow me.
Okay, boys and girls, here we are at the whiteboard, and um, I have a little bit of a, an organizer here for us to do um, so that we can reflect on the reading that we've just done um, over the beginning of the American Revolution. Um, so what I want to do right now is give you about um, three seconds where you can pause the video so you can grab your notebook or a piece of paper here and you can copy down my um, organizer here. It's just a simple little chart. Um, it's got main idea here on the left side and uh, supporting details over here on the right. We're going to get a main idea and three supporting details from our reading um, so that we can kind of um, summarize or come up with an idea uh, about what we've read about without having to, you know, memorize literally everything we've read. We want to organize our thoughts. This is a good way to do it. So I'm going to give you about three seconds right now uh, to pause the video and then we'll get started. Okay, perfect. So in our reading, um, we read about Lexington and Concord, we read about uh, Fort Ticonderoga, and we read about the uh, Battle of Bunker Hill and how, the, how those things turned out for the colonists and the British at the beginning of the revolution. So when I'm reading that, and I'm, I'm thinking about what the main idea, what the overall message is of the unit. Um, maybe, maybe you're in, on the same page as me, but to me, the idea is um, the, the, the British, because like, let's think about you know, who won most of those battles, right? The British won many early battles. But... But the colonists um, the colonists uh, used effective oh boy, I'm gonna run out of room. Oh no. Effective um, we'll say uh, fighting strategies. To me, this sentence, the British won many early battles, but the colonists used effective fighting strategies. To me, that's a sentence that kind of sums up what we've read between um, Lexington and Concord um, and, and Fort Ticonderoga and Bunker Hill. And we're going to use those three um, situations, those three events, to help us find supporting details. So for me, let's start with Lexington and Concord. And I'm thinking to myself, well, if I'm trying to prove that the main idea is the colonists used effective fighting strategies, I need to come up with something, some, there should be a piece of evidence in my reading from these two, this, these early battles that, that will tell me that. Um, and I think what I go to is the fact that uh, colonists um, killed and wounded many soldiers during retreat by ambushing them, right? By ambush. So um, as the, the British were, were returning back to uh, Boston, uh, remember the colonists were following along behind and attacking from the woods and, and you know, not doing that very formal lining up for war like was the that, that was the custom in those days which you might remember we talked about this was a strategy the colonists employed during the French and Indian War right when they were fighting against the French um, and and they apparently realized that that was an effective fighting style and logged that away for later to use against the British um, so there's my supporting idea uh, my supporting detail number one colonists killed and wounded many soldiers during retreat by ambush um, and, and sniper, right? Uh, uh, there, the, you know, the Kentucky long rifles and all that stuff, um, were, were happening now. Uh, the second thing, um, Fort Ticonderoga, um, the Ethan Allen, right? Love his couches. Just kidding. Um, you don't get that. Ethan Allen, uh, captures artillery, right? which cannons, right? He captures the cannons at Fort Ticonderoga with the intention of bringing them back for the colonists to use. Um, and then also the British can't use them. Ethan Allen captures artillery at Fort Ticonderoga. 
love your pencils. Just kidding. Well, I do love it. It's just that you miss these jokes, right? Yeah, I know you do. I know you do. Um, and then the last supporting detail that I think I want to go with, and we're talking about um, Battle of Bunker Hill. Uh, you may remember the, the British won that uh, that that battle, um, but they suffered much more intense losses than the colonists. Um, so something along the lines of uh, colonists were able to defeat large numbers of troops um, at Bunker Hill. I'm going to check my notes and make sure that that's what I wrote down just for a second because I, I feel like that's what I wrote down. Um, oh, I had something by, like, they worked together. Yay. They worked together um, to defeat large numbers of troops. So, I mean, you know, uh, We'll just tag that here. They worked together. I wrote down my notes and then I started recording with them not in front of me, which not a good idea, but we're making it work. Um, they worked together. And I'll put a big smiley face. Yay. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, here's my main idea from the reading we just did in social studies. The British won many early battles, but the colonists used effective fighting strategies. Here are my three supporting details. Number one, colonists killed and wounded many soldiers during retreat by ambush. This was, remember, specifically um, in our book at Lexington and Concord, but it applies um, to many other situations in the war, as we will see. Uh, Ethan Allen captures artillery at Fort Ticonderoga. The British are not able to use them, and now the colonists have nice new cannons to use. Um, and then finally, colonists were able to defeat large numbers of troops at Bunker Hill. They worked together. Yay, teamwork. Um, which I guess I, brings up, I mean, you know, it's an interesting, uh, you know, when, you know, when Mr. Thomas is teaching social studies, a lot of the times uh, the stuff that we're uh, learning, I'll have, like, I'll go off on random tangents and talk about how this makes me think of what's going on today, which is, I think, why history is so useful um, when we study history, we can apply stuff that has happened to stuff that is happening so that we can potentially, um, if people made good choices in the past, we can maybe try to echo those. Um, and if people made poor choices in the past, we can avoid those and, and do something else. Um, and I guess what this makes me think of is um, the colonists here at the beginning were up against literally the largest military in the world. Um, at the time, and, and they are, they have no, or very small, organized military of their own. Um, they're relying on militia men and, and folks who are um, not professional soldiers. Um, and when you think about that, you know, these, these um, average, ordinary people going up against trained uh, fighters and trained soldiers in the largest military in the world, you think of all the resources that that Britain had at the time, you think of how little um, the colonists would have had to their advantage, I guess, in terms of official, you know, money and resources and all that stuff. Um, it makes me think of kind of the situation that we're in right now. Um, maybe you're watching the news and, you know, you're seeing that, you know, this, this uh, virus, this everything that's going on is getting really big and it's getting really scary and more stuff is closing and you're not sure what's going to happen and how this is all going to work out. Um, I think we can take um, what the colonists have done here and maybe apply it to that. You know, the colonists were up against an extremely large force. It was not something that they should have been able to overcome. Um, but they worked together. They employed effective fighting strategies. So like these things like um, social distancing and closing schools, these are, these are strategies that, that are effective that we can use to overcome something that seems scary. Um, and remember, uh, you know, I've said it many times, I, I am not scared because um, we are taking steps that, that, that help us, um, that will help us with this, this, this battle that we're in right now against um, a, a virus. Um, 
And, and, you know, I've said before, we don't need to be scared about this. Like the colonists, if they were scared about this, um, you know, they might have made some bad decisions. And I'm sure there were people who were scared, but I think overall um, it's, it was their, their, their attitude of working together and overcoming that, that helped them be successful. Um, and, and remember what I've said. We don't need to be scared. We need to be smart, right? And this is one way that we can be smart is by employing effective strategies um, to defeat this thing so that we can get back to normal as soon as possible. Um, on, on Canvas, there will be a, there will be a, a, a page uh, for you to work through based on the video that, you've, that we've read here and you've watched with our main idea and supporting details. Um, so go check that out. Um, I love you. And um, I will see you soon. Um, and uh, I hope you smile today. I hope this video, um, hearing me and seeing me, um, I hope that made you smile a little bit. Because it makes me smile just thinking about um, you getting to see me. And I wish that I could see all of you and we could be together. Um, and, and we will again soon. Um, but remember, in the meantime, I love you. Be safe. Be kind.